Business Intent Overlays, or BIOs, allow multiple WAN links to be bonded together and used in different ways. In this video, we'll examine the different modes available, the impact WAN link characteristics can have on the resulting performance, and we'll do a demo to show how high quality and high throughput perform in different environments. Link bonding policies define how SD-WAN site-to-site -site traffic is distributed across eligible links and how forward error correction FEC, is applied to the traffic. Four pre-configured link bonding policies and four overlays are provided out of the box to handle most common traffic types. By default, the real-time BIO uses the high availability link bonding policy whilst the remainder of the overlays use the high quality bonding policy. High availability chooses the best performing path, uses the path until it's near full, then waterfalls traffic onto the next best performing path. All traffic receives one-to-one -one FEC, meaning a copy of each packet is placed onto another underlay. It's a lot like RAID 1 in the storage world. The high availability link bonding policy type should be used only for real-time traffic, since it renders the effective combined bandwidth to 50% due to one-to-one -one FEC. This mode is ideal for voice, where delivery of the packet is paramount and bandwidth consumption is low. High quality mode chooses the best performing path, uses the path until it's near full, then waterfalls traffic onto the next best performing path. It does not use per packet load balancing. Adaptive FEC is used to provide parity packets if there is circuit degradation. High quality link bonding policy should be used as the default selection for all non-real-time traffic types. High throughput and high efficiency modes both load balance packets across all underlays performing below the service level objective, or SLO, defined in the overlay settings. The only difference is HT mode uses adaptive FEC to provide parity packets if there is circuit degradation, whereas HE mode does not. These two link bonding modes are only used in unique circumstances. We'll discuss this in more detail later. You can also select custom bonding, which enables you to customize link prioritization and traffic steering policies based on multiple criteria. At the start of this video, I mentioned the term WAN link characteristics. This means the bandwidth, latency, loss, and jitter qualities of a given WAN link. Indeed, we should go further and consider the point-to-point -point characteristics of an underlay, since round-trip time, loss, etc. is a function of the WAN links at both ends and all the intermediate links along the path. When thinking about the appropriate link bonding mode to choose, all these factors must be considered. We can simplify this and apply one of these general categories to WAN circuits, variable WAN links or constant WAN links. Almost all internet-based circuits are variable in nature. ISP routing protocols that provide divergent paths across the internet mean a given path between two points may perform differently at different times. There may be variable levels of latency, loss, jitter, and possibly contention. By contrast, private circuits such as MPLS, point-to-point -point fiber, or LAN extension typically perform more consistently as they are dedicated, without contention, and do not use the internet. TCP, in particular, is sensitive to packets arriving out of order, and as we'll see, choosing high throughput mode in a variable WAN link environment could actually result in performance degradation compared to choosing high quality mode. In this demo, we're going to see how both high quality and high throughput modes actually perform over variable and constant WAN links. The lab is private, but we're going to use a WAN emulator to simulate a pair of 100 megabit per second WAN circuits between two EC appliances. For the variable WAN links demo, we'll set one link to 125 milliseconds latency, labeling it INET1, and the other to 250 milliseconds, labeled INET2. For the constant WAN links demo, we'll set both links to 25 milliseconds latency. 
We could also simulate some loss, but FEC would correct it, so we'll keep it simple and just simulate differences in latency. We'll use HTTP to transfer a file from a lab server to a lab workstation using a single flow. We could also use SMB v2 or later and see similar results. But HTTP is a much simpler protocol and the wget utility reports speed and time taken to complete. Boost will be disabled. So here's the lab environment we're going to be demoing in. We've got two appliances. We've got B1, which is our client, and we've got DC, which is our server. We've got a ping running here on the left. This is from the client to the server, and we can see the round trip time is currently 125 milliseconds. We're going to use wget in a moment to retrieve the file. And to monitor this, we will use the appliance charts, and we'll load those up from B1. And we will monitor the LAN interface, which will give us the total throughput to the client. We'll monitor both of the WAN circuits, INET1 and INET2. And we can also take a look at latency for the two underlays. So we'll just add those in here. And we're also going to lock the scale as well. So for latency, we can see INET2 to INET2 is hovering around 250. INET1 to INET1 is hovering around 125. And because the client is also seeing 125, that's a pretty good indication that we're in high quality mode. Let's first of all change to high throughput mode for this first demonstration. And we can see now on the left here, the ping times have started to change. We can see some are 125, some 188, some 250, and, and that's the per packet load balancing in action right there. Let's begin our file transfer test. We can see throughput is a little bit choppy and we're not quite achieving the full 100 megabits per second on the LAN side either. And our 500 meg file took 74 seconds to complete. Now we will switch to high quality mode. Now we can see the ping times on the bottom left have returned to 125 solidly. Let's begin the file transfer. We can see both WAN links are being utilized, but this time we can see the LAN throughput is reaching 100 megabits per second and beyond. So we're able to utilize both these disparate WAN links. Throughput is much smoother. We can see TCP is not having to back off. And the same 500 meg file completed in 44 seconds. This is the private circuits demo. As you can see, we've dropped our WAN simulation latency configuration down to 25 milliseconds for each link. We are in high throughput mode. Let's do the first transfer. Here we can see both WAN links being fully utilized, 100 megabits per second each for a near combined LAN side throughput of 200 megabits per second. And the time to complete our 500 meg file was 24 seconds. Now we'll switch to high quality mode. And let's begin the file transfer. As with high throughput mode, both WAN links are being fully utilized and the LAN side throughput is pretty much the same as well. And our 500 meg file completed in 24 seconds. So what is actually happening? The private links test shows very little to choose between HQ and HT modes. Since both WAN links are identical, it doesn't matter if you load balance on a per packet basis in HT mode or rely on waterfalling in HQ mode. Any minor variations in packet arrival time will be taken care of by packet order correction, 
up to 100 milliseconds by default. However, the internet links test shows very different throughputs for each bonding mode. When you use high throughput link bonding mode, you are telling Edge Connect to enable per packet load balancing. If WAN latencies are in excess of 100 milliseconds, and two or more WAN links have different latencies, some packets will arrive earlier than others. Packet order correction can't help anymore, since the WAN latency is now over the max weight threshold, and so TCP has to back off, sending SACs, and retransmissions occur. You could increase the POC threshold, but that will effectively make your lower latency WAN link perform like the higher one we're waiting longer for. Since HQ mode waterfalls onto the second longer latency link if bandwidth demands require it, throughput is still better in HQ mode since it does not load balance on a per packet basis. In the second internet links demo, we saw a 58% speed improvement by switching from high throughput mode to high quality mode. The key takeaway is to be aware of your entire fabric's WAN link characteristics when choosing a link bonding mode. Earlier, I mentioned high throughput and high efficiency modes are only useful in unique circumstances. If you have multiple dedicated point-to-point -point circuits with identical bandwidth and latency characteristics, and your workload is a very low number of data replication flows, then this is what high throughput was designed for. And if you are sure there will never be loss present over any of those links, high efficiency mode may work even better. You could configure an HT or HE mode overlay just for replication workloads, and apply it only to your data center appliances. Most overlays will be deployed over multiple internet links with varying latency and loss characteristics carrying high numbers of user flows. As we saw in the demo, HT or HE modes are not going to provide the best user experience and should be avoided in favor of high quality mode. Finally, also bear in mind that these link bonding mode decisions will usually be applied to all your Edge Connect sites where all sorts of different WAN links and characteristics will be present, from DSL and LTE right up to multi-gigabit circuits. As a side note, with regional BIOs, there is the flexibility to customize the link bonding policies in a specific region. For example, if in a defined region you have multiple circuits with latencies that are the same, then the HT or HE modes may be applicable and configured just for that region. As a best practice, and for most environments using internet links, high availability is the right choice for real-time and voice overlays, high quality mode for all other overlays. High quality mode will dynamically calculate the best possible user experience in real time as network conditions change, whilst making the best use of the available circuit capacities without any additional admin overhead on your part. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>